leaders of the school. Kenneth Hawking. Kenny's here. Well, they were angels. They never got into trouble, so they told her that. No, they weren't. They weren't really big problem ch children, but they did. At times, you know. So, what kind of hot meals? It began just like every other day in the lunchroom. Keith and Kent Hawking, followed by Alan DeLeo, gathered their lunches, including the dessert of the day, plum. They would come through this door and then pick up their food here. And headed for their table. The best table, a status afforded them now that they were seniors. That's what you wanted. Yeah, plums were on the menu that day. They would you would probably get plums. The plums right about here. They're about the dessert aisle. As they passed through the crowd, Keith, with hands that could guide any ball or beat any drum, grasped his plum. And with the artistry of the athlete he was, he flung that ripe fruit across the room. On the other side of the room, shy and quiet, and a whole year younger than Keith, sat Marsha Peters. She was too young to know, to imagine, the evil that resided in Keith, and she certainly never saw the plum coming. It was such a beautiful sweater. I still have it. Can we uh, see it? Oh, no. No, it's just too painful. When the screaming stopped, all the boys were brought to the principal's office. One by one, they stepped before him and repeated the phrase, I did not throw the plum at Marsha Peters. Would one of them break? Keith listened as each one repeated the denial. But when it was his turn, he smirked and laughed, and in one heartbeat established his guilt. Next stop, City Hall for another stain, this one on his permanent record. The town never forgave nor forgot. Keith. Isn't he Kent's brother? Wasn't he Plum Boy? We all remember Plum Boy. Don't say that name around here too loud. We got long memories. And how does Kenny, father to Plum Boy, feel about it now, over 30 years later? See, they grew up with their grandma. See, their mother taught school. In Laverne? Or... In the Elizabeth and Laverne both. Okay. And so grandma was the babysitter. We just lived down the street corner of Brock, so she probably could tell you a lot of escapades. She probably had more problems with him than I did, you know. He, he never admitted to anything that he, uh, that he did in the lunchroom in a food fight? Mm -mm. Not, that I, not to my recollection, no. I asked him if, if Marsha Peter was in their class or if he knew where she lived. And he said, well, I don't. Only I think I ever recollected was that was a lunch incident, but he didn't proceed to tell me what it was, you know, so I don't know. Maybe. I never worried about her, but I questioned, yeah. yeah. I never worried about it because, you know, I always figured, you know, if worst gets to work, you know, like the old saying go, you gotta pick crap with the chickens then, you know. <laughs> Thirty scared seniors walked the halls of Ivy for the last time on May 28th, 1969. Tonight we launch, where shall we anchor? Well, I heard some people talking but I don't think he's had any deep sorrow over it. He's, but he's been had very it. successful. And that was his down the road there, you know. Down the road there, you know. That became Keith's mantra. Go away. We don't want to talk anymore about it. When we come back, life on the run and a whole new identity for Keith. I'm already gone.